Hello everybody, and welcome to part 8 of the Ski Resort Insider's Guide series. If you've watched a certain one of my other videos, you'll know that I'm not particularly fond of this ski resort. But, because this is my livelihood, today we are discussing Breckenridge. For anyone new, this series is me sharing all of the locals' tips I've gathered skiing the resorts of the West, and sharing those tips with all of you. With that, let's begin, an Insider's Guide to Ski Resorts, edition, Breckenridge. For this video, looking at the trail map, I'll work from left to right. Breckenridge is divided into five different peaks. The peaks increase in numerical order, starting at 6 and up to 10 from right to left looking at a trail map. Peak 10 is the area on the far left, so I will start there. Peak 10 is all blacks, as can be seen on the trail map here. In my opinion, and please keep in mind that everything I say is subjective, Peak 10 has the mildest blacks in Breck. Some of the blacks in Peak 10, such as Crystal, Centennial, Double Jack, Bronc, and Cimarron, are usually groomed. I would suggest always checking the grooming report before going anywhere grooming could be in question. All of these single blacks to the right are moguls, except the burn, which is a glade. All of these double blacks to the left are moguls and or glades. As designated on the map here by this dashed line, Flapjack is a very flat runout, so be prepared for that if you are coming out of anything from Bronc to the boundary. Peak 10 tends to be less busy than other areas with blacks, namely Peak 6 and Peak 8 Alpine, and it's a great place for advanced intermediate skiers to cruise the groomers. Peak 10 is also one of the best places in Summit County, if not in all of Colorado, to ski your first black. Something that is not shown on any trail maps is that there's a mid station on the A-chair for unloading. The A-chair is extremely slow, making for an almost 15 minute ride. For reference, a ride on the Quicksilver Super 6 takes around 5 minutes at full speed with no stops. The mid station on A-chair, if looking at the trail map, is about the same place as the Quicksilver chair ends. If you're a beginner and are looking for a good place to lap, I would recommend lapping A chair to the mid station. It is much less busy than Quicksilver and much more convenient than Peak 8. More on that in episode B. As mentioned, Quicksilver gets extremely busy. The largest percentage of Breckenridge visitors arrive through Peak 9, and because there is only one out of base lift in Peak 9, Quicksilver gets very busy. Later in the day, it gets better, but I personally would avoid this lift all morning if possible. If you do have to take the Quicksilver, there are two lines. The Quicksilver is a double loading lift, meaning it has two separate mazes that never merge and load in different places. This is a very common thing in Europe, but Quicksilver is the only example of this in North America. In the morning, everyone goes to the further downhill line because it is closer for everyone walking up. First thing in the morning, I would walk further uphill and get in the uphill line. Later in the day, the uphill line will be busier from people lapping the lift. Later on, I would suggest going to the farther downhill line. Beaver Run and Mercury Super Chairs are both great lifts to lap if you are an intermediate skier. In my experience, neither seem to typically have crazy lines, unlike peaks 7 and 8. Sometimes one will be busy, but it is rare that both will have exceedingly long lines simultaneously. If possible, I would recommend skiing to Mercury. If its line is too long, then ski down, cut across on Red Rover or King's Way here towards the Super Connect, and take Beaver Run instead. All in all, if you want to lap blues, I would highly suggest Peak 9. All of the Peak 9 blues are very nice, long, groomed blues. Generally, the middlemost runs, Cashier and Bonanza, are the busiest, but overall, none of these runs are too terribly crowded for the most part. These four single blacks around the sea chair, Shock, Volunteer, American, and Peerless, are mostly groomed, but again, I would suggest checking the grooming report. The sea chair is only run on weekends and peak days, as it only serves the same terrain that is served by Mercury and Beaver Run. These double blacks under each chair are extremely steep and short. One thing that I've noticed is that because of the way these runs are facing, they tend not to get as good a snow as other runs at Breck. The back of 9, this hike to terrain above each chair, is very underutilized. If you're looking for some alone shred time, I would recommend hiking out to Twin Chutes. Because it is under skied, the snow is also usually pretty untouched. To get from peak 9 to this peak here, peak 8, you have two options. The overwhelmingly more used method is taking the peak 8 super connect. This is usually the best method. You can get on at the base or the mid of the super connect. Typically, the weight will be less at the base because only every third or fourth chair is usually sent empty to the mid. 
The other method to get to peak 8, and the method that is almost never used, is to take the snowflake lift. To use this method, go down Gold King or Peerless as if you are going to Sea Chair. At the bottom of the Sea Chair is a little cutoff that takes you down to the mid station of Snowflake. From the top of Snowflake, you can go down to the base of Peak 8. To go the opposite way, from Peak 8 to Peak 9, you'll go down either of these runs, Sawmill or Crosscut. If Sea Chair is running, I would highly suggest taking it, because Lower Sawmill below Sea is extremely flat as shown on the map. Alright, that's it for Peaks 9 and 10. Part B will cover Peak 8, and Part C will cover Peaks 6 and 7. As always, please leave any questions down below. Thank you so much for watching. All my love, I'm out.